I'm Scott Al Miller, and this is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Many of you have been wondering and asked me how it is best to get from Nicaragua to Costa Rica when going terrestrially. That is, by taking the bus. Of course, you can drive, and there are some rare flights, but in general, people are going to be looking at bus travel because it is inexpensive, relatively quick, and quite convenient for most of Nicaragua to go to Costa Rica. So we're gonna focus on our local bus here, the Nica Expresso, which goes from where we are here in Leon, which is a popular origination or termination point, to Liberia and San Jose in Costa Rica, our neighboring country to the south. There's a lot of traffic moving between Nicaragua and Costa Rica, and so we want to give you a guide to help you get between those, these locations. Of course, the bus will stop in other cities such as Chinandega and Managua and Rivas for those who plan to go to San Juan del Sur. So we're going to give you detailed instructions on what it costs, how to do it, where you go, and everything to make it comfortable and easy for you, whether you're starting from Nicaragua and heading to Costa Rica or starting from Costa Rica and heading to Nicaragua. We want to give you a complete guide so that this is something you can do comfortably as it's an important skill for those who are traveling in or living in either Either of these countries. So let's get to that right after the bump. All right, guys, we're going to be digging into the Nica Expresso. Now, if you want to travel from Nicaragua to Costa Rica or Costa Rica to Nicaragua, there are several bus lines that you can choose from. And honestly, they're all probably really good. Nika Expresso is the one that we use. It is located close to us. And we have some experience with it. So that's the one I'm going to be showing here. This is not a review to say it's better or worse than any of the others. You've got some choices. Uh, the Tika bus being the most popular, I would say, especially with the foreigners uh, who are willing to spend a little bit more. But all these are very affordable. All of them are very nice. We've had good luck with the Nika Expresso. So I'm, I'm, giving the review as an it is a great option i am not comparing it to the others because i have not tried them all out at some point i'm sure i will and i'll love to give a review comparatively between them but we do have good luck with this so we're just giving this information and i know some people want to follow the same steps go to the same stations that we do the same terminals and that can make things easy so from north to south the nika expresso originates in the city of chinandega to the north of leon so very, very few of my audience are going to be starting their day in Chinandega. That's not very likely. Not a tourist center, uh, not near a tourist center, doesn't have any attractions, so that's not expected to be a thing. But if you are starting up there, then very easy. I'm not sure what time it originates up there. I think it's at 5.30. And then around six o'clock is a pickup in Leon. We're only one city away, we're not really far. And uh, so Leon is the beginning of where the tourists really start getting on the bus. But there aren't very many tourists on this bus. This is a local commuter bus. It is private, but it is nearly all Nicaraguans and Costa Ricans who are taking the bus. You will always see a tourist or two, but we are the exception, not the rule. And even those of us who live here full time, we don't see very many of the expats on the bus. So uh, here in Leon is probably where you're most likely to be starting or from Managua. There's also pickups in places like Didiamba, Hinotepe, Rivas, and so forth. But the main ones are going to be uh, right here in Leon. So we're gonna tell you about that one or in Managua. And we're gonna show you that one because those are very easy to do, really discreet locations that are super simple to show. So we're going to show those on a map so you know where to go. For everything else, we're going to hop into the website. I'm going to show you what uh, you have as options. But from there, the bus takes you, that's that's Nicaragua, takes you to the border at Piñas Blancas, if anybody's interested. All of this is along the Pan American Highway. It's not going off in weird locations or anything. It's basically taking the Pan American from Chinandega, which is not the real Pan American. It doesn't join uh, the real Pan American until Managua. It's the Pan American bypass that it's taking, the western route. So it's going to come down that from Chinandega through Leon to Managua. There it's going to join the main Pan American, the United Pan American, and it's going to head south from there all the way to the border at Piñas Blancas, which is the Pan American crossing, the main land crossing for Nicaragua and Costa Rica. And then it's going to continue on to the cities of Liberia and on to the capital in San Jose with a stop, importantly, at the San Jose airport. So if you want to go directly to the airport at San Jose, 
there's this is a really popular reason to do that. All three main stops in Costa Rica are quite popular. Liberia has its own airport and is access to the Nicoya Peninsula and the, the Guanacaste region, which is very heavy with expats. So if you're a tourist, that's likely a spot you're going to want to go. The San Jose airport, a lot of people take this bus for the purpose of getting to that airport. It's an important airport for Nicaraguans. Liberia is, but not as much so. San Jose is the big one for Nicaraguans to use because it goes so many places and it's so cheap. That's really nice. Uh, Liberia is nice too, but very small. And then San Jose as a major city, it's much larger than Managua, has a lot of resources and shopping and restaurants that we don't have here in Nicaragua, so also popular in that direction. Of course, all the things in reverse, you've got places like uh, the stop at Rivas for San Jorge to go to Ometepe. You can also catch a bus from there to San Juan del Sur, so that's popular for, with people coming north from Costa Rica. The stop in Managua would be the one you would also use to launch to Granada if you're going to that tourist area. Managua proper if for some reason you're heading to the capital and of course going on to Leon as a major uh, cultural and tourist destination uh, for Costa Ricans northbound as well. Very few Costa Ricans would continue on to Chenandega. Mostly those are Nicaraguans returning home. Uh, so that is the path and it's a really useful one for people who live in or are vacationing in this region. So this is a just a great option uh, for you. So if we dig into the website, first of all, top right, you can see there's a Nicaraguan flag and an American flag. If you're watching my channel, chances are you want to see it in English. Just click the American flag, get the page in English. Won't be any problem there. There you can go to the routes tab and get a little bit of information about where they go and uh, what it's going to cost. So real simply, this is $35. Now, $35 is what you pay when you buy your ticket. You do need a little bit of extra money while you're on the bus. Routinely, we have to pay $1 or $2 on the bus, plus the border crossing is not paid for in your bus ticket, so you need to have that separately. That does vary by where you're going to and from, what your nationality is, and so forth, uh, whether you have a cedula, whatever. So there's a lot of different factors, so they don't collect that up front. Uh, if you are a tourist or an expat, you got to pay $1 as you leave Nicaragua as an Alcadia tax. That is a city tax. Uh, uh, residents, or I'm sorry, citizens don't have to pay that. Residents do. Uh, but typically you want to have uh, a couple $10 bills and a bunch of uh, $1 bills just for handling different things. That generally the cost of going southbound is $14 and northbound is, uh, um, I believe it's 10 to, no, it's eight now to exit Costa Rica, but that you pay at a machine in the booth. We'll go through some of that, but you, it can vary, right? So even though we know it's 14 one way now, that's easy for that to change. And every so often there's like these extra $1 fees here and there have a few extra dollars. It's not going to be expensive. It's not a huge amount, but it's not included in this, but your tickets are just $35, one direction, $70 round trip, obviously do a little math for you there. Uh, and that gives you the entire route. You could go as far north as Chinandega, as far south as San Jose, uh, in both directions or get on or off anywhere along, but there's no discount for getting on or off along the way. So that is the price. And that's very nice. If you're coming into Costa Rica and you have to have an onward ticket for some reason, which is a very common thing in Costa Rica, we don't have that in Nicaragua, but some airlines claim you do or force you to have it by their own rules has nothing to do with Nicaragua. Then this is a very inexpensive way to show that you have an onward ticket out of the country. Now, I want to talk about that real quickly. When you sign up for your ticket with the Nika Expresso, they do not send you the actual ticket. They send you an invoice and receipt for the ticket. That'll come by email. So make sure you get that email, have that there. I have never once had a problem with border control anywhere just accepting that. They're used to it. The Nika Expresso is a major crossing uh, device for people. And so if you're coming into the airport, you know, the, the customs agents or the border uh, control agents, um, when you come into Costa Rica, which is where they care, are used to this. So you could just be like, this is my bus. I'm catching it at Terminal 710, heading north to, to Nicaragua. Here's the dates and everything. I've never had the slightest hesitation on that. So it should be no problem. But you do not print out the tickets. If they give you for some reason tickets, great, print them out. But the way it works is you actually go to the booth and they give you the actual ticket at the last second. You just show up with your receipt. No problem at all. If you were to go in person, if for example, you were in Costa Rica or in Nicaragua already, and you wanted to go have physical tickets and you just wanted that peace of mind, you can do that. You go to their, uh, their agent, which is at the same place that you catch the bus and you can buy your tickets there and they will print out the actual tickets at the time. Um, but if you do it online, you just get a receipt. It's so easy. Just do it online. No reason not to, but you have that option if for some reason you're panicked about it. 
If you're coming into Costa Rica, though, you have to already have it ahead of time to qualify as your onward ticket. So generally, you have to do it online. So just the thing you have to be aware of. All right. So there's a bit of information here uh, that you can look up on the page. They do have um, their agencies list. So if you go under the agencies tab, you can see there are places in Nicaragua. You can go see one at Didiamba, Hinotepe, Rivas Leon, Chinandega, and there's one in Esteli. I have no idea how this works. I have no idea where the bus goes to in Esteli or when it goes to Esteli or if the bus ever goes there. I don't know if you can just buy tickets and then they tell you to go somewhere else. I think that's actually what happens. I believe, and I'm totally hypothesizing here, but knowing the bus, having ridden it several times, knowing where it goes, I think in Esteli what they do is sell you a ticket in person so you know you have it, you can talk to someone, but I think they expect you to take the, the regular public bus to Managua and pick up the route in Managua or the public bus to Leon, which are about the same distance, but it, I could see it going either way. Since they charge the same for the ticket, they wouldn't care. You do get, we'll mention, assigned seats. So when you uh, sign up, and most people sign up just a little bit ahead of time, you can sign up well ahead of time and have really good pick of your seats. Last time I signed, I, I paid for my tickets maybe three days before getting on the bus, and there was like two people who had selected their seats already. So we don't need a lot of time on these. People tend to buy these last second. So if you're waiting until the, the night before and you're trying to pick your seats, you may not get the seats you want. But if you're doing it any ahead of time, if you're concerned about having, I got to sit on the right, I got to sit on the left, I got to be in the front, I got to be in the back, whatever, just go a few days ahead of time. And, and rarely is the bus completely full. So chances are you can pick. We tried front row this very last time. And uh, honestly, that was pretty nice. Um, but we, you know, my wife likes to be towards the front because she gets motion sick. So we like to be in a spot where, where she definitely has an aisle because she hates the window. And, uh, but it's, it's two and two, right? So you, it's pretty flexible. No one's getting a middle seat. It's not like an airplane. Um, but we like to be towards the front. She finds the back a little bit harder uh, for her motion sickness. So we always put in a little bit of effort. Honestly, it's a bus. They're all about the same. Nobody has a front view. It's it's not like that. It's a barrier in front of you. They close it off so you can't see the front. Uh, they also have a uh, branch that you can go to in Costa Rica, but it's important. In, on the Costa Rica side, there's only one spot to go. If you need to go talk to someone in person, the only place you can go is the uh, terminal. They call it Terminal 7. 10. They accidentally on the website write it as Terminal 7-1. The zero is just missing. It is called Terminal 7-10, Siete Diez, and it is because it is at the corner of Avenida Siete 7 and Calle 10, or 10th Street. It's a well-known terminal. We're going to show it on a map. We're going to show you the recommended place to stay when going there, because we have a hostel that we like a lot. Relatively inexpensive, relatively nice, and cannot be more convenient. And they have a backup one that's just a few blocks away. Should there be anything wrong, the same place can put you just down the street. And I've done both. Both are fine. But the one right next to the terminal, you can't beat that. So we're going to talk about that. But these are the agencies. And then let's look at actually buying a ticket online. So you can see this. We're going to go to online reservations. And that will come up. And they've got a couple questions they're going to ask you for most important things. So notice they only have one way. They don't offer round trip tickets. Just buy two tickets if that's what you want. No problem. Uh, there's no discounts or anything. Do you want to go from Costa Rica to Nicaragua or Nicaragua to Costa Rica? We're going to pretend we're here in Nicaragua, which I am. So we're going to head that direction. Departure date. Remember, this is global dates, not American dates. So it is day, month, year, not month, day, year. So, but just bring up the calendar. You'll see it. So let's just say we're going to go on October 23rd. We'll pick a day. Where are you going from? I have no idea why La Verhen is the first thing that they show. That is an extremely uncommon pickup point in the middle of, it's not exactly the middle of nowhere. Actually, I'm a little bit surprised that more people don't use this. La Verhen is the actual stop for San Juan del Sur. However, there is no additional bus us at La Verhen that I'm aware of. So if you get dropped off at La Verhen, you're as close as you can be to San Juan del Sur. But I don't know how you're going to get there. So that's really useful if you live in San Juan del Sur and you have a driver waiting for you or you have friends waiting for you. Someone is going to come out and pick you up. It's really not far, super easy to do, but you're going to be dropped off on the Pan American, not on the coast. So it's maybe a 15, 20 minute drive, really not bad. But if you just get off there, you're going to be in the middle of nowhere. Good luck. Uh, if you're actually going to San Juan del Sur and you are a tourist, you're going to go on to Rivas, where they have buses and shuttles that you can you can just take normally that head down to San Juan del Sur quite a bit farther. But if you haven't arranged a, a ride ahead of time, you're going to have a problem. If you have a hotel in San Juan del Sur and they're sending a car to pick you up, 
than Love or Hen. Just arrange that that's where you're going to be. Just say that the Nika Expresso is going to drop you off in Love or Hen. Have the WhatsApp of your driver or the hotel. And then when you get there, when you get close, you can say, I'm really close. And then when you get there, just send your location. They're going to be able to come pick you up super easy. Uh, so just be aware of that. This goes through a list of all the different places that you can originate uh, in Nicaragua. And you can see there's quite a few here. Nandaime, Managua, you know, Tepe de Diamba. Uh, El Capri is actually a restaurant. Uh, they mean El Crucero is the town. Uh, Matiare is just outside Managua. Could be uh, handy if you're coming in from there. These are not in the order that they actually go. Izapa is a, is a um, crossroads in between Managua and Leon. But again, could be really convenient if someone is picking you up or dropping you off in the middle of nowhere. Uh, Nagarote, La Paz Centro, the big cities here in the Leon area. Uh, Salinas Grandes is, it's a, just a, another intersection on the Pan American. It's not actually in Salinas Grandes. Um, Argelia, I actually don't know where that one is. Uh, Leon is right here, the main city. We're going to show you that one where it is. Talica is a little city uh, just outside Leon. Uh, Pozotega, Quetzalcoatl, uh, Chichigalpa um, are all very small places uh, between Leon and Chinandega. I have no idea why this order is the way that it is. Then Chinandega is the final stop to the north. Porto Sandino, just outside Managua, uh, really close between Managua proper and um, Mataare. Uh, Nahapa is on the, is a, I don't know when you could go to that. I don't know when this goes through both these different locations. So a few of these I'm a little bit confused by. Nahapa is a different road coming into Managua. I've I don't believe that the, the bus goes through there. Ojo de Agua is just out in the countryside. Again, I don't know when it goes on that route. Um, Frontera Nicaragua literally means if you're going to be picked up at the border, which you're able to do. If for some reason you're being dropped at the border, you're going to walk the border, you can get on the bus there and just go right across the border. And then Ochomogo is the uh, choke point. It is what we call the drug checkpoint. There's one spot in the country where the water from both sides comes in really close, and there's basically just one bridge over that river. It is a major traffic choke point for the entire country, and so it is the permanent drug transport checkpoint where you're really likely to be stopped and just have your papers checked because it's the one spot where anyone who's trying to go from Costa Rica to Honduras has to pass that point from a practical perspective if you have a vehicle. So not one you're likely to be getting on at, but it is an, a convenient spot to be dropped off. And that may, may make it sound kind of scary. Actually, that would be a handy place to get dropped off because you have a lot of police. You'd be super safe if you're worried at some of these like, oh, I could catch a ride in the country. I might be standing alone in the country. I might like miss something. I might be alone in the country. That one is one where you would always have a police presence uh, just milling about so you'd be crazy safe. Um, you're always safe, it's Nicaragua, but I understand. Solo travelers, solo female travelers, you may not want to stay in one of these places where you're a little bit more exposed and you're like, I'm the only person standing out here. All these cars driving by can see me. That would be one where, yeah, a lot of people can see you, but a lot of them are cops. Uh, but we're gonna be just saying we're coming from Leon. So that's where either that or Managua, nearly all of you, maybe Rivas and, and Loverhen are going to be coming from. And then they have a list for a departure time, but it is the time is the time. 6 a.m. is what they list. Uh, and then you can pick where you're heading uh, in Costa Rica. They have a number of places you can get dropped off, but realistically, it's going to be San Jose, the Aeropuerto, or Liberia, at, which is down here. These are the main stops. If you know where you're going, you could pick some of these others. I don't know all of these. Um, but it doesn't matter too much because they just want to have an idea of how many people are going. If you put in San Jose and then decide to get off earlier in Liberia, you just let the driver know, hey, I'm getting, there's a conductor actually, tell the conductor, hey, I'm getting off in Liberia, no problem, they'll let you off. Just, uh, they want to arrange your luggage, so when you put your luggage on, say, oh, I decided to get off in Liberia instead of San Jose, no harm, no foul, they'll just have your luggage ready so that when they get to Liberia, they can find it quickly. They just have it like staggered in that way. So we'll pretend we're going onto the San Jose airport in this example. You can pick, I always do one ticket at a time, but you can do multiple and uh, go ahead and search for that. Hopefully some are available on the day that we picked. Uh, and this is where you need to sign in. I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. And here we've got a little form we've got to fill out. So I have an account here. I've done this a lot. Um, so mine is generally going to autofill when I'm on my own computer. You do need your passport number. Not a big deal. Make, just make sure you obviously you got to have your passport. You're going internationally. Identification type. They're going to give you some options unless you are something crazy. You are ordinario. Just leave it as is. You don't have to worry about that. Then it's going to need your name is always first name. 
in uh, in Nicaragua. Last name is your last name. Uh, second last name, you don't need this. Most of uh, the, my viewers don't have a second last name in Nicaragua. You generally do, so it's common to ask for that. Just leave that blank, not a problem. Put in your date of birth. Marital status, soltero is single, and you could, they actually ask quite a bit here. Um, so soltero is single and casado is married. For some reason, you can put in that you're divorced or you're a minor, um, that you're in a free union. I don't know why they have some of these or why you would ever use them, but they're there just in case. I would just stick to you either single, married, or a minor and let it be. If, if you're divorced and now single, nobody needs to know that and it does not matter for anything. Nationality. So assuming you are neither Costa Rican or Nicaraguan, choose the place you're coming from. If you're staying in Nicaragua and heading to Costa Rica, just pick Nicaragua. I have been a tourist many times coming from Nicaragua and that's just what we put. Never had a problem. They know that the system doesn't take other passports. It doesn't matter. If you do have a Nicaraguan cedula or a Costa Rican cedula, make sure you're picking the the place that matches your cedula if it can't match your passport. Uh, but if you have a Nicaraguan or Costa Rican passport, obviously select the right one. Uh, then put in your email, your home phone, and your cellular number. I have two cellulars. I put in for phone my American cell, and for cellular I put in my Nicaraguan cell. Kind of random. Um, never had them call me. And then continue, and then it's just $35. You put in a credit card, and it will uh, give you a receipt that then you can take and use for a ticket. So that is the website. That's all we need to look at. And now you have a decent idea how to buy a ticket. So this is super easy, super casual. Generally, you can buy these last second. Don't bank on that. But if you're like, oh, I kind of want to go to Costa Rica today. Could I do it? Assume you probably can just jump in and, and check it out. Now you won't be able to go the same day unless you're buying it like 4 a.m. Because the bus really does leave around 6. So we're going to go into a map and show you where you actually can catch the bus. All right, so we're looking at the city of Leon. You can see we're, we're zoomed out a bit here. The road to the south is the highway coming in from Managua. The highway to the west is the one going out to the beaches, and the one to the north is where the bus will come in from Chinandega. We're not going to look at all the little stops you can do along the way. They're pretty easy to figure out if you're really lost and don't know what to do and you need a rural stop somewhere. Get down in those comments, let me know, we'll figure it out for you. But in general, of course, if you have any questions or comments, get down there and 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 let us know because we love doing that, uh, getting you know things for people to answer. But generally, we're going to show you the stops that 99% of you guys are going to be interested in, Leon being probably the most important. All right, so I keep trying to turn my head, but the microphone's down here, like I can talk to you from anywhere. We're going to zoom in here. You can see it's already marked on my map. And you're in this little area here between 5th and 6th Street, one road off of, so Route 12 is the Pan American Bypass. So that's the main highway passing by the east side of Leon. Uh, so this is very convenient from the highway perspective. From downtown, you're going to want to take a cab out there, right? Just take a taxi, say the Nike Expresso. If for some reason they don't know where that is, um, you can kind of show it to them on a map, and this is easy to get to. Uh, fifth and sixth are one direction, so five will go out to it, six will bring you back, uh, and it is in the middle of this block. You may find that this is impossible to find when you're there. That is normal. Don't panic, it's really there. So this location is mid-block, uh, the Google Maps is correct. The map that I'm showing you is correct. We've been there in the last few weeks. I've been there over a period of years. It has not moved, but they've redone the office and they don't always have signage. So you may be right in front of it and you may be coming up to six o'clock and you're like, the bus is supposed to be here. I don't have my tickets. I must be at the wrong spot. A lot of the locals are super confident in how late the bus will be to the point where they won't arrive until a few minutes before six and often the bus doesn't get there till 6 15 6 20 so don't panic to the point where the office may not open until six o'clock so at 5 55 you may be freaking out and trust me i've been there and then at six o'clock the person wanders in opens up the office everyone standing outside turns out to be waiting for the bus gets in line gets their tickets printed and still waits around for the bus to show up so and it really, the bus just shows up on this little tiny side street, on this little 12th Avenue uh, Northeast, this little tiny thing. That's where the bus shows up, and you just, you just hang out there, and the bus picks you up. It really is 
nerve-wracking the first time because you aren't confident that the bus is really going to get you. And then once you've done it once, you're like, that was the simplest thing, but I can see why people panicked. Uh, and then, this is worth noting, if you're being dropped off in Leon, you are not going to be dropped off in front of the Nika Expresso, but rather at this gas station across the street uh, that they have a picture of here. So they're, they're not going to go into that side road. They're just going to pull up into that gas station, drop everyone off, and the bus is going to shoot on to Chinandega. Because it doesn't need to stop to pick people up and get luggage. So it's just a quick drop off and run. So if someone is coming to get you in Leon, they need to know to go to that gas station. But it's right there from the Nika Expresso station. It's just look over the highway to the other side. And then it's really obvious. Again, make sure you have WhatsApp with a uh, connection with whoever you're going to be picked up by. And just send them your location. Easy peasy. All right, that is Leon. We're going to move on to Managua because we want to show you that one, which is the, the next stop. Um, it does potentially stop in little spots in the country uh, as it's heading to Managua, but typically it's going to go right into Managua and get you pretty quickly. And the pickup is actually in Los Robles, which is a really good location, actually. I'm incredibly happy with where that they where they do this uh, because it ends up just being um, an incredibly convenient convenient place uh, to do this. And if you watch my videos, a lot of times I talk about staying at um, the Doubletree and uh, using the area of Via Fontana and Los Robles and Aurora and just this really beautiful, nice area um, uh, around uh, Managua. And this is the same road. So this is not the biggest highway, it's it's Avenida Principal Los Robles, and it kind of feels like a not very major road, but it's a really significant, important spot in the city, and this is going to be all the way at the north end of it. We're going to zoom in. There's a little tiny dead-end street here, and we'll notice here on the map, you can see it on my screen, uh, Tonelli's Restaurante. This is generally considered if not the best restaurant in uh, Nicaragua, it is definitely the best Italian restaurant in Nicaragua. Absolutely fantastic. If you're ever looking to go, it's an important place to know. Uh, Don uh, Perillon, um, right there on, on the main road, famous uh, steak restaurant. This is the beginning. This is the north end or the bottom, because it all goes uphill from there, uh, of one of the most important restaurant and club districts in the entire country. So this is a really well-known area, incredibly safe, very affluent, uh, so easy. So the bus actually pulls in to this dead-end road, but just right at the entrance to this dead-end road. So between Don Perignon and the Condominios Gama uh, across the street, that's where the pickup is. The bus is going to turn into that dead end, do a turnaround, because it's going to come down Los Robles to get there, I believe in most cases, and then it heads up uh, to go up to the Suburbana, and it's going to go uh, up the road. Oop, a little bit of map problem there. And it's going to go up the street there uh, towards many things that I show on the show all the time, but it's going to turn on the Pista Suburbana and head out of the city uh, to begin heading down south. So if you're going to get picked up in Managua, that's where you're going to go. Really easy to find, really easy to have a taxi take you there, take a public bus there. If you're staying at the Doubletree, it's straight down the road. If you're staying at the Hilton Princess, you can walk it realistically. Like, easy, like not, not on my walk. I could walk from the Doubletree. You could walk from the, from the Hilton Princess and a lot of those locations. So pretty uh, pretty easy to deal with. Now in Rivas and the southern locations, I don't know the exact pickup location. That's something you'd have to ask them at the time that you're booking. If you're coming um, from somewhere, you, you could just send them a mail or give them a call or whatever, and they could tell you where to go. I don't have unlimited information, uh, but those locations are, are pretty easy. Uh, so from there, you just get on the bus, um, you know, you can bring a bit of luggage. You have big comfy seats. Uh, there is not power on the bus, so you can't charge things, at least on the buses I've been on. There is Wi-Fi, but it's not the best. We've had problems with it not working. Uh, so that's something to be aware of. And uh, uh, they're going to stop generally at the duty-free. Of course, nothing's guaranteed, but they standardly stop at the duty-free just before they get to the border. Uh, there's not really time to go shopping. It's more of a bathroom stop, uh, but you can grab a snack really quickly. There's multiple times that someone will jump on the bus and sell drinks or food on the bus as well. The bus also hands out like a wafer cookie and a little fruit drink. Um, very, very little, just in case you had absolutely nothing because you get on so early. But there's no one selling food when you get on in Leon, and I don't think there's anyone selling food when you get on in Managua. So if you're 
you're getting on at those locations, consider bringing some snacks for sure, because it may be a while before there's food. Once you're down in Rivas, they generally hopping on the bus to sell you a few things, and that duty-free stop, you'll be able to buy quite a bit there pretty quickly. But snacks, not generally meals. You want, probably want a snack before you cross the border. The border crossing in either direction can take a little bit of time. We've definitely had times where we did the entire process in 45 minutes. No big deal. There's also people who report three to five hours. Partially it depends. Is there another bus in front of you or a group of buses? Are they really backed up? Is there someone in your group that has a major issue, uh, may hold them up or whatever? It's just going to vary a lot by a lot of factors. So generally it's pretty fast, but be aware that this is a major land crossing with a bus. And so there are times that you could end up just behind a million people. So make sure you've dealt with uh, snacks and drinks or anything like that. We can't show you the border itself, of course, but uh, there is a bathroom. It's hard to find as you're coming into from the Nicaragua side on the Nicaraguan exit border all the way to the right. There's a bathroom kind of around the side of the building. So if you need to go there, now that's right after you're at the duty free. Also, if you can bring some small change, if you can't Make sure you have like the smallest Cordoba you can get your hands on. Uh, but if you can have like coins, it's really, really cheap. I think it's either three or five Cordoba to use the bathrooms at duty free. Often these are private bathrooms that you pay for and you're basically paying for someone to clean them and stock them with toilet paper and stuff. And they'll actually hand you toilet paper as you go in. As a general rule for travelers, in case this has never occurred to you, we generally recommend traveling with things like toilet paper and wipes. They're great things to have in your backpack. My kids always have those things packed just in case. You never know when you're going to go use uh, a public rest stop or a gas station or something. And even if they have toilet paper, it may not be almost guaranteed not going to be toilet paper that you like. Bring toilet paper you like. Make your life better. It is just one of those traveler secrets no one wants to talk about, but it really does matter. All right, so you're going to get through the border and you're going to be into Costa Rica. Once you're into Costa Rica, we have... Once we've crossed into Costa Rica, we're going to come down Route 1 from Piñas Blancas that you can see at the border, and we're going to come down to Liberia. This is very small on the map, but this is actually the, the big city of the north. Um, this could be if you're going to be taking flights out of there, you'll want to stop there, or if you're heading out to the coast in that region, you'll want to stop there. This is where all your transport, hotels, restaurants, all of that is located there. Not that many people actually get off there, but certainly it is an important location to be aware of. Then we're going to continue down to the capital in San Jose. Now, I don't know the exact location. I believe it's around Miramar, but there is uh, a stop at a restaurant that they do. It is a uh, buffet, but it is a, someone told me, you know, Americans think buffet means something different than this. I was not aware as an American, this is exactly a buffet to me. So I had no idea. Apparently I'm supposed to call it a cafeteria, cafeteria style restaurant or a cafeteria style buffet, but there's a buffet full. Uh, it is literally a buffet is the word for it, full of food. And you tell them what you want and they dish it out and then you pay for the whole thing. So it does, it is like a cafeteria to school in many cases, but not always. Um, and prices are not bad. It is This is meant for Nicaraguans and Costa Ricans to eat at. It is very traditional food done quite well. As a buffet, the selection is quite large and quite good. We're consistently happy with it. So that's pretty nice. And there's views of the ocean from there. So that's kind of cool. Uh, it's a little bit longer stop because they expect you to eat, but you can get your stuff to go. So don't worry about getting back on the bus. I always get it to go, eat it there if I can. And then whatever's left over, I get on the bus. Even as a vegetarian, there's stuff I can eat. I get gallo pinto, you know, the rice and beans. I tend to get like potato salad salad and some vegetable things like there's there's really some selection and I do eat uh, like cheese so I, I often get cheese there you can get sodas they have diet coke which is nice for a lot of people who are struggling to find diet drinks they have uh, refrescos like the the traditional drinks that they make themselves it's a nice place and it has really nice well not really nice has adequate bathrooms that are free because you're stopping there to to eat so it's another bathroom stop to be aware of and just prepare yourself because you'll probably be hungry by this point it's normally the middle of the afternoon and it's your first meal stop your only meal stop from there you turn into the mountains until this point it's been mostly kind of rolling countryside or flat areas the whole way from chinandega once you go past this restaurant you're going to turn east and go inland towards san jose this is where you head up into the mountains the weather's going to get cooler it's going to get misty and you're going to start winding through the mountains this is where my wife worries about motion sickness a little bit the two main stops that you care about are 
Alhuela. This is actually where the airport is. The bus stop will actually stop directly in front of the airport. The airport has a loop with the main road coming past it and the bus stops in the middle. So you can walk either direction and enter the airport on the airport road, but it drops you off on the main road. So if for some reason you're catching an Uber or a bus, that's gonna be perfect. If you need to go into the airport, you just need to walk around. Very close, very convenient. And unless you have real mobility problems, it's very easy to walk into the airport. Uh, so that's a great drop off when I'm there. Now, I haven't talked about the other locations because Nicaragua, we do tons of content on Nicaragua. And in Managua and Leon, these are big cities and there's no hotels like at the drop offs. Well, there is the Hotel Los Robles and the, and the uh, Hilton Princess uh, are both right by uh, the, the pickup in Managua. In Leon, there's nothing by there, but there's tons of all the places downtown are just a few minutes away. Uh, in in um, Alhuela, uh, I, I am a fan, obviously, of the Hilton Hotels. The Hampton Inn Airport is right there. Obviously, everything in Costa Rica, especially by an airport, a little bit more expensive, but very convenient. It has a hotel shuttle to the airport. So I'll just walk into the airport and the shuttle either just pick us up or I'll call them and let them know. But it comes like every 15 or 20 minutes. It really does. So that's easy, free shuttle back to the hotel. And then from there, you can use Uber to go wherever you need in the city. Lots of good eating even there uh, around the airport. Uh, then the bus goes into San Jose proper. Now this is where it gets a little bit tough because San Jose is a really big city and we have to find uh, the bus terminal that we're gonna be going to. So I'm going to zoom in on that so you can see where it is uh, because this is where you're gonna get a little bit lost. Like, where in San Jose am I going um, and how do I get to and from there? So let's dig into San Jose. All right, so this is the city of San Jose. It does have the big ring on the outside and a large downtown. This is a big city. Uh, this bus terminal was really bad two years ago when we started using it. Now it's actually gotten quite nice. I wouldn't call it nice. It is no longer the scary place that it was. They've cleaned it up a lot. So thank you to Costa Rica and the city of San Jose. They took, they apparently watched my show and were like, Scott has concerns about this specific bus terminal as an entrance point into Costa Rica. And they fixed my concerns. Completely different now. So definitely use it. No problems at all. At least on my last couple times going there, which was over the last like nine months. Uh, so look at the map. We're going to zoom in to get you to the terminal. Hopefully this goes straight into it. We're good. Okay. So we zoomed in. You can see Calle 8th and Avenido uh, Siete, 7th, and then Calle Diez on the left. It's actually on 8th that you want to go, not on 10th. I know that's confusing. So right over here, you see the corner of 7 and 8. We're going to go up and this is the entrance right here. This building right here, this big one, hopefully you can see my mouse pointer, is the terminal. So just go up to this entrance on 8th and you can go right in. Now you're wondering where I said that I was going to tell you a place to stay when you're going to be going to either getting off the bus and you just want to go right into a nice hotel. Uh, it's a hostel, but it's very safe, very nice. We're very happy with it and easy to Petito's jaw in your food, no problem. You know, order some other way or use this as a point to grab an Uber and head out somewhere to get food, no problem. So this is the terminal. Go down to the corner of 7th and 8th. Go down 7th, halfway down the block. And this right here, you can see the little symbol. This is the Soy Local San Jose. This is where we showed on uh, the show maybe two, three weeks ago when we were, my wife and I were coming back from Argentina. This is the Soy Local that we stayed at. Now, if you watch my Bolivia videos where I returned from Bolivia, I stayed at a Soy Local just a little bit farther away and I had to run many blocks to get to the uh, terminal. Uh, this one is so much better. I actually like the location a little bit better and it's right next to the terminal. Like, it's perfect. So I cannot recommend this enough for people who are staying at this uh, or who are using the bus because you either are, you want to get up in the morning, you need to be at that bus terminal early. We're going to talk about that in a second. Or you're getting in relatively late at night. So typically you're going to get in between six and eight. But if things go wrong, you could be getting in pretty close to 11. So you want a place that you can get to really easily, especially in the dark, quick and easy. One of the other reasons that I like this Soy Local so much is directly across the street, this large building across the street is the police station. So you have a lot of police coverage here. This is a big city again. It, like This is not sketchy like it was two years ago, but I still like having a police station there, let's be honest. So this could not be better. There's a little bit of food right there. There is a little, I think there's a restaurant in the Soy Local. Uh, we ordered in Burger King from the new Burger King all veggie restaurant, but not that far away from this location is um, 
the Lebanese restaurant that I really like. There's a lot of stuff, right? Costa Rica is on point when it comes to food. Uh, so enjoy your time in San Jose. But even if you're not going to stay at Soy Local the whole time you're there, um, it really is awfully good for when you're arriving. Now, Let's talk about this journey in reverse. Of course, buying your tickets, all that stuff, you don't need any more information. If you're getting on the bus somewhere else, if you're getting on at the airport or at Liberia, I honestly don't know exactly what you have to do. You'll have to talk to them. I wish I had more information. We never do this. Even if we're coming in by the airport, we switch to this location and start at the origination point. It saves a little bit of money. And if you're coming in the day before, which is often what you would do, it's a minor inconvenience to have a bunch of convenience at the start of the day. So we recommend that in general. If you're coming in at Liberia and catching the bus, Liberia and catching the bus, obviously that could be great for you, but we have not done it and I don't know exactly where to stand to wait for the bus. If you're going to be starting here in San Jose, this is really easy. Again, I recommend spend the night at Soy Local. Get up in the morning. Make sure you're ready to go out the door by 5.30, but you don't have to have a lot of lead time. Just walk out the front door of Soy Local, turn right, go to the corner, turn right again, and you're looking at the terminal right there. Just walk up, it's a halfway up the block on your left. Right there is the police station across from the Soy Local that we like to stay at. This is the intersection, and this is police parking, so they're kind of surrounded by the police. This is the intersection of 7th and 10th, and hopefully you can see it, that right up there, is the 710 terminal. That is where you get the Nike Expresso, which takes you from San Jose, Costa Rica, back to Managua and Leon, Nicaragua. Three minutes, so close. Walk into the terminal. As you walk in, first thing, right on the right, coffee and pastries, so they got you. You can get started right there. There's also a little bit of shopping in there. It's a terminal, but it's very little. This is the main entrance at 710 terminal. You've got some shopping, you've got some food, and this is the Nike Expresso. Just come to this window right here with your online uh, receipt and you'll get your tickets and you can head off to the bus. Straight ahead, if you walk in from 8th, straight in front of you is the Nika Expresso booth. Just go straight up to the agent there, show them your receipt, they'll print out your tickets, make sure everything's okay, they'll look at your passport, all that stuff, same as they do in Leon when you get to the agent or in Managua, and then uh, they're just, they'll tell you where to go, but you just turn to the right go around the corner of the little store right there, and that's where they're loading the bus, right there. Um, I have gotten there at the moment that the bus was supposed to leave, no problem. Do not cut it that close, you will be sorry, you'll be stressed, but you don't need a lot of lead time on this. Now in reality, you'll want to get there like 5.30, just take some time, get a coffee, get a pastry, whatever, right? Enjoy your time, go and look, make sure the bus is there, make sure they know you're there, have your tickets in hand, just relax. There's a place to sit, there's snacks, you could even do some shopping, maybe grab a couple things like a bottle of water, something that you want to have on the bus, make your life easy. Now, uh, once the bus leaves, which is about six o'clock, they'll load up your luggage and you're on your way. There's a few stops and everything just happens in reverse. There's no big things that you need to know. Um, it's basically going to be the exact same thing. Again, have a little bit of cash. You do need to pay for exit uh, from either country and entrance into the other uh, in Costa Rica. This is one tip that's worth knowing. The exit tax, if you pay it at a booth, I think it's like $12. If you pay it at uh, the on the bus, it's like $10. But if you wait until you're in inside. You can pay online, so you can just go on your phone while you're on, on the way, pay for it there. If you wait until you get into uh, the actual uh, um, immigration center, which for exit, there's a little machine in the corner, just go up and you can pay there. We did it online last time. The machines are relatively new. The whole system is very easy. It is so much cheaper if you do that, so make sure you're doing it either online or with the machine right there at Migracion. Then the bus will take you over to Nicaragua. You do your entrance into Nicaragua. That is where you have your heaviest scan, where you're going through all the x-ray machines and stuff uh, going in, and then they're off to Nicaragua. In Nicaragua, they do get dinner, but unlike the southbound route where you stop and have like a full meal on the way there, um, I don't know if they stop northbound in Costa Rica. I feel like I've done this a couple times and it's been different, so I don't want to say what they might do. If they stop, it's going to be the same place we talked about. Uh, but there's normally a stop somewhere around Nandaime as they head north through Nicaragua. That is not a stop where you get off the bus and get dinner. That is a stop where you order from the bus and someone gets on the bus with your order. If you're vegetarian, you're out of luck. I've not been able to find anything you can eat there. Uh, so if you're going from Costa Rica to Nicaragua, it's more important if you're vegetarian to bring food with you. Uh, if you're going, if you're, if you're, 
a meat eater, you're fine either way. There's going to be something like chicken or whatever. Um, but it's a bus bringing snacks, super easy. And they do sell a number of different snacks on the bus. But unless you like Nicaraguan food, it may not be what you're looking for. So just be aware uh, of those things. Not very expensive. Normally, they'll take U.S. without a problem. Have some Cordoba, maybe have some Colones uh, on the Costa Rican side. You'd be pretty pretty flexible. Drop-offs are the same in the opposite direction. The only one worth noting, as far as I know, is that Leon is on the other side of the road uh, than where they pick you up. And that is about it. It's all very easy. We like the bus a lot. We've been very happy with it. Um, people do ask, is it air-conditioned? Yes, they air-conditioned the bus. It's pretty comfortable. Um, be aware, it might be cold for you. If you're Nicaraguan uh, or live in Nicaragua full-time, the bus might be on the chilly side. We did one time have the air conditioning break down. That was a broken air conditioner, right? That was not as designed. Uh, but be aware that internet's not the best. It is worth noting, if you're coming into Nicaragua, that uh, we've had people get on and actually sell Claro SIM cards cards right there on the bus. So if you want to get service in Nicaragua, they might be able to just sit down with you and get you all set up right there. You don't have to go anywhere. Not seeing the same thing happen southbound. So just be aware that that may be a thing. If you're on T-Mobile, of course, it's going to work in both countries. No problem. If you're on Verizon, you definitely need to get a SIM card. Uh, you can get cards in either country that work in the other, but it's generally better to have one in each. I live with T-Mobile when I'm in Costa Rica and then have Tigo, my own service in Nicaragua, when I'm in Nicaragua, because I'm not in Costa Rica that much. And most the time when I'm there. I've got good Wi-Fi, so it's fine. But getting a Costa Rican number, absolutely fine too. And then you could have your own service plan while you're in Costa Rica, or you can get with post-pago plans, which is more like what America has. Uh, here you've got the pre-pagos, which means you pay ahead of time. Uh, obviously they do that in the US as well. Those don't come with international plans. You can pay for some service in another country, but it's very expensive, not very flexible. If you're doing post-pago, some of the carriers do offer plans that cover both Nicaragua and Costa Rica, generally the entire region. Uh, and then you can just move transparently between them, but the post-pago plans are more expensive and you can't turn them off when you're not using them. So uh, if you live here absolutely full-time, they may make sense. My wife has a post-pago. Uh, I have a pre-pago because I'm more flexible and I just switch back and forth for whatever makes sense for me at any given moment. That is my how to use the Nika Espresso. If you have any questions, once again, get down there, let us know if you need an update or you've got questions about how it's going to work or what you need to do in your specific scenario. But if you're heading to uh, anywhere in the south of Nicaragua, you're heading to San Juan del Sur, Ometepe, Managua, Leon, uh, there, Granada pretty easily from Managua, heading to the Managua airport, any of those, the Nikkei Expresso is going to work really well for you. If you're heading south to Liberia, the airport at either Liberia or San Jose or San Jose proper, the bus is going to work really great for you as well. $35 per person, very easy, counts as your onward ticket out of Costa Rica, uh, at least to the Costa Rican government. Private companies can do whatever they want to do, and um, it's comfortable. It's, it's easy, it's safe, and uh, we do it all the time. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you like to help support the channel, you can do the extreme thing and join our membership, which is really just a way to support the channel. There's no special benefits with the membership, but we really appreciate the commitment of people who help make this show possible by doing a monthly contribution. Or you can do the same kinds of things up at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. You can do a one-time payment. We are going to set up a membership system there to match the, the one in YouTube, but we haven't gotten there yet. One thing at a time. And uh, please remember, if you're watching this on Thursday, that it is live stream day. We will be doing that uh, really shortly from the time this is live. And as always, hit that like and subscribe. Tell someone about the show. Post a link. Go watch another video. Be sure to watch the live stream. Get on there. Ask your questions in real time, uh, but also post your questions here and send in video questions as well. And I will see all of you who aren't on the live stream that I see in a few minutes tomorrow.